I don't think I could call myself a feminist, a friend once told me. They all just seem so angry. And of course, women aren't supposed to be angry. Anger is a masculine trait, fiery and passionate and intense. Women are supposed to be gentle, to compromise and sacrifice. Women are supposed to know their place. We are supposed to stay quiet. Well, I have news for you. I am a woman. I am a feminist. And I am angry. I am angry that I live in a country that doesn't allow women access to safe, legal abortion. I'm angry that despite thousands of people taking to the streets to demand that the Eighth Amendment be repealed, the government says that a referendum on this issue is not a priority for them. I'm angry that I live in a country with one of the lowest rates of conviction for rape cases in Europe. I'm angry that I live in a country where funding to every rape crisis centre in this country has been cut year on year since 2008, despite the exponential increase in women and men needing to use those services. I'm angry that I live in a country that still doesn't have a legal definition for sexual consent and that people are allowed to say on national television that maybe that's a good thing because girls cry rape. And I'm angry that I live in a country where women are dismally underrepresented in the doll and when people spew vitriol at you when you dare to suggest that gender quotas might be a good idea. But in some ways, I'm glad that I'm angry because it makes a wonderful change from feeling afraid. And as a woman living in Ireland, I have often felt afraid. Why are you angry? I was only seven when I learned what the words rape and abortion meant. The X case in which the Attorney General obt obtained an ob injunction to prevent a young girl from leaving the country to obtain an abortion hit the headlines in 1992. The girl at the centre of the case was suicidal, the victim of long-term sexual abuse and had become pregnant after being raped by a family friend. She was 14 years of age. You couldn't escape the story. It was all over the news, on television, on the radio, in the papers. People debating the morality of allowing a child to terminate a pregnancy that had been inflicted upon her. And I learned my lesson. I learned that my body was not really my own. I learned that my body was in some way in the control of the state. And I became afraid. That same fear tore strips across my heart when Savita died in 2012. She died begging for an abortion. She died begging for her life to be valued above that of her unborn child. And not here, she was told. Not here in Ireland. This is a Catholic country. There was outrage, tears, candlelit vigils. And we all prayed because that is what we were taught to do as children. We were taught to get down on our knees and pray to a God and hope that he was listening. We prayed that he would show mercy on us, unworthy as we were. Nothing happened. Twelve women a day kept leaving these shores, their hands on their bellies, returning as criminals for daring to want autonomy over their own bodies. Some of them had been raped, some were the victims of incest. Some had been given the news that their baby had fatal fetal abnormality and they were forced on the first boat to England, forced to travel 
at their most vulnerable. Others still knew that it was just the wrong man or the wrong time and they wanted to do what was best for them. Twelve women a day compelled into silence for fear of judgment and recrimination, looking over their shoulders, cringing, waiting for someone to yell baby killer at them. And we ignored them. We pretended that they didn't exist. More cases. A woman who is clinically dead is kept on life support despite the desperate pleas of her family. The fetus must be protected above all else. An asylum seeker, another victim of rape, is forced to undergo a cesarean section in 24 weeks gestation because she can't leave the country and she cannot have an abortion here. Not here. Not in Ireland. The fetus must be protected above all else. And then I knew that I wasn't safe here. I wasn't safe and neither was my sister nor my female friends and my female cousins and my aunts. I knew that we would be left to die as long as the heart of the fetus was still beating and that we would be expected to die happy. Human life is a beautiful thing, you see, but not if it's a woman's life. Oh no, the fetus must be protected above all else.